up, I always figured that I was going to end up a turned bowl with fruit and nuts or grapes sitting on a kitchen counter or maybe a side table with a hidden compartment in the top drawer that you could keep, I don't know, candies or love letters or secrets in. So I was shocked when I opened my eyes for the first time and staring me in the face is a middle-aged Italian man. The bushy mustache having some sort of an anxiety attack. He's running around the room saying, wake me up, wake me up. Something's wrong, I don't understand, wake me up. And I said, hold on, get a hold of yourself a minute. Uh, first of all, this is your wish come true. So don't be so surprised. He introduced himself to me, he said, hi, my name's Geppetto. <laughs> and he said, you, my son, I'm going to name you Pinocchio. I said, wait, what? <laughs> but, Pinocchio. Can you give me one more when you get it? I, don't get me wrong, I was happy to be alive at the time. I don't want to sound like I'm ungrateful, but Pinocchio's a lot. And it's like, is it one N and two C's, or two C's and N? Spell check never gets it right. Plus, there's constantly one idiot on the playground that knows like five words in Spanish, and they're all swear words. And he's like, yo, Pinocho, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> then I also have to deal with the hipsters at Starbucks that always want to use the original Italian pronunciation. Caramel macchiato for Pinocchio. For Pinocchio so once we get past the initial awkwardness of the, the breakdown and the introductions, uh, apparently day one, job one, is to send me to school. I couldn't have been less prepared. He, he took a stack of books, wrapped them in a belt, gave me the cricket. Not Jiminy. Jiminy's my boy. I mean the cricket, the cell phone, the cheap little paper use. Look, I get it. I'm new. Oh, thank you. I'm probably going to lose it. I don't even know how to text. The cricket is fine with me. I don't need an iPhone. So I head off down the street to school for the first time, and I didn't get like five blocks away when the local pimp is all of a sudden recruiting me for the new fresh, hot, young thing. And apparently the new fresh, hot, young thing is a walking, talking, singing, and dancing puppet. I'm sorry, marionette. Whatever. Yada yada yada. Next thing I know, I'm working the pole down at Strumpo. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. It wasn't as bad as it seems. I, I get that I was being taken advantage of. I get that I was in a dangerous situation. I get that it probably wasn't great for my psyche, but man, what a rush. Honestly, you're on stage, man, and the crowd is going nuts. Crowding up to the front, pulling on your strings, the MC's like, coming to the stage next, Pinocchio! My theme song is blaring over the loudspeakers, Annie Lennox and Eurythics. Well, we not tell something that wasn't true. I'm asking you, sugar, what I lied to you. I freaking loved it. <laughs> Every single minute of it I loved. I, I ended up in therapy. Because <laughs> of that morning, actually, um, not the Stromboli stuff, I've been chasing that high forever, but the stuff that happens before that, the, the failure that I felt from the old man, Papa G, day one with the unspoken disappointment of, look, I love you, son, but you're done. I felt 
felt like one of Aunt Becky's kids for a second. And, I mean, really, is it that difficult for loved ones to just show that you believe in us? Just a little? The Blue Fairy finally sprung me from that gig, and uh, it was against my will. I wouldn't have gone. Uh, and as it turns out, I never even made it home. First day, uh, it springs me from Stromboli's. I'm on my way walking home, and 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 I wasn't two blocks away from Stromboli's that that honest Jim, honest Jim, sold me a timeshare at Pleasure Island. <laughs> I didn't even go home. I just made the right hand turn, went right off to Pleasure Island. Uh -huh. I, I think it's been established that I was vulnerable. <laughs> so this was possibly the worst choice I could have made, right? I, I mean, there's no rules, there's no parents. It's just nothing but drinking and smoking and gambling and vandalizing and... Whose idea was this? My boy. It, it chokes me up a little to think about how much it means to me because uh, Jiminy saved me from the timeshare and he, he pulled me away from that before I got too long in the teeth and I made a complete ass of myself. And he became my sponsor. We're working together on the steps and I'm getting truthful and I'm getting brave and I'm getting selfless and someday with his help maybe I'll be a real boy. Yay. Thank you. All right, I love that so much. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a little distracted by your nose. Have you ever seen the movie Roxanne? With Steve Martin where his nose and she's like getting hypnotized by and he poked me in the face with his nose earlier. So Alright, who's best food number one? Stand away. So I swear to you, if this is not a Netflix original from a year from now. Oh my god, that was so good. It was. It was so good. Part of it was good. Actually, my wife gave this to me because she didn't want to talk, but now she wants to talk. It's okay. You were awesome. That was the best. Oh, no, that's right. And most entertaining story you have ever told. And I want all of you to show this. Thank you. Right on, Linda. And spin number two. What's your name? Good. Pinocchio. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lie to me. Yeah. Number one, you're a big fat liar. Oh, <laughs> no. But not that fat. Number two, that was absolutely brilliant. Awesome. Absolutely brilliant. The costume alone awesome. makes you believable. But the uh, background story yeah. is uh, just the question for you, how the heck did you come up with this idea? <laughs> I, uh, so the, the costume is, uh, is something that I've been working around for a long time, and I, I, I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> There, there are times when I wake up in the middle of the night and I just write something down and I look over at my side and I go, what the hell is this? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to do something that was in the character. And I, I honestly, the, the original intent was I was going to tell the story of being in the whale uh, and, and kind of bringing the realism of, of how it would really be to be swallowed by a whale. Um, but that got a little gruesome really quickly. Um, and, and it just sort of evolved into this. And I, I wanted to own the experience of, maybe Disney told you one story, but there may be something on the back end, and that's what I found interesting about it. And I understand in real life you're a psychotherapist. Is that <laughs> and spoon number three. Oh, Rachel. If you know your life had went the other way and you'd been the table with 
So, in the original incarnation of the story, um, the reason that the secret compartment is in the table is because I wanted to somehow uh, bring it full circle where uh, something about the end of the story was, was in the secret compartment of the table, but I, but I never developed that all the way. So. I, you know, I, from a, for the craft people out there, um, as they write, um, I was trying to think of two things that I could have been in a previous life that I may have been, that I thought of myself as, that had some depth and some, um, I don't mean that flippantly, I mean something other than just some random thing that, ma that was made of wood. So the, the concept of being a table with a drawer that had a hidden compartment in it, uh, it lent itself to things that as an audience member you could, um, you could fill in the blanks for. And, and that would make sense to you, so that's kind of where I ended up with, with that. Yeah. So that makes sense. Okay, yeah. Doyle Stein's final comment. How do you add to that? Nothing. Well done. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah.